In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to edit text on an ID card, a license, or any other document material of similar look. This video idea was brought to us by my friend Vicky from South Africa, who reached out to me after watching my previous video asking me to edit her license for her. And so I thought if it was useful to her, then it should be useful to a lot of us out there. Now, if you are just seeing me for the first time, I am MyCMXC and this is Air Graphics Designers Company. Here, I make videos purposely targeted at beginners or aspiring designers who would love to master the ins and outs of Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, which are the three core graphic design softwares. And I am crazy good at Photoshop and Photoshop manipulation. Oh. Here, I'll be dropping tips and tricks on how you can do that as well. With that said, let's dive into the video. Now, before we get into the video properly, I would love to remind you the two crucial steps to take before going into Photoshop. Um, number one is preparing a clear standard image for the edit. Now, how do you do that? Uh, you either take a clear snapshot of the document using your smartphone or a digital camera, or you put the ID card or the document into a scanner, take a very clear scanned image of that document, and that will be ready to import into Photoshop. Now, the next step is you having to match the fonts. Here, you discover the right font type that was used in the document. And how do you do this? I have made a previous video of it. Check out the video here to know exactly how you match the font. All right, here we are in Photoshop and this is the image document we're going to be using for this video. Um, it's an ID card template I got from a free website called Freepik. So it's just, it's just a template, it's not a real thing, but it's going to be useful for this video. I already showed you how to import images or documents into Photoshop, so I'll be going through that part, as well as how to determine the font that was used in a particular image. And for this video, I will not be going through that process anymore. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. Um, for this particular document, even without matching the font, I already know from experience that this font used is area, our normal area. And so we have a number of steps to edit text on an id card and i'll be going over them as we proceed now the first thing the first thing first is always to duplicate your original layer and as you can see here i already have it duplicated this is my original layer the background layer and this is the duplicate and how do you duplicate you can just right click and then you see duplicate layer here when you click on it to ask you this prompt and okay you have a background layer copy so i'll just drag this here and delete this i don't need it so the next thing we're going to do now is take our type tool go to your type tool and then type in the text you want to change you are going to type in exactly what is written on that document so you can match it now click on the type tool then type in country country of birth and then click on ok now you'll come here to your characters panel if you don't find this here you come to your windows plugin and then look for character here it will, it will pop up here now um you are going to increase this size the font size till it matches um okay i think it's good here then change it to, it's obviously in bold good now as i mentioned in my previous video what you need to do is make this your new text as contrasting as possible so you can match them you can see the difference with your eyes now you come to color here and change this color to anything off just anything you can make it blue red purple as long as it's way different from the original text so you can see the difference now align this thing on it and then use your ctrl t for transform or you come here to edit and then transform when you come to scale yeah so you can scale this up holding shift to keep it in proportion make sure your scaling is in proportion if when holding shift distorts the image then leave let go of shift for mine it's actually distorted if i don't hold shift because this chain here this link this icon here that looks like a chain is ticked off but if it's ticked on then i can scale it in proportion without needing to hold shift so 
I'll go again, transform, and then I'll hold shift in place till it's looking good enough. The both C's are looking like they are matching. Now, what I will need to do is holding down control close to this um, anchor point here would show you a white icon. If I let go of control, this is what I'm seeing here, a black anchor. But then if I hold control, it will change to a white cursor here. Now that white cursor, when I hold it and drag, it can make me transform it. You see this? This is what I want because I want to scale it. The image was not taken in a straight form. So I need it to look almost similar. And then after doing this, okay, it's looking good. I can then make this 11 points and see, oh, it's not working. Then 12 points, obviously. Now 12 points, you see. One thing you need to know is because it was an image, it was a snapshot of the image. They would, they might just not look perfectly aligned. But when you have something as good as this, it would go undetected. You're very much good to go. With that done, we have our text already matching with it. Now, what you need to do then is use the original image to match the color of the new text. Now, when I zoom in, I'll turn off this visibility and click on color. I'll see the color picker icon here and then I'll choose the most predominant color of, of this original text. Click OK. When I turn it back on, you see my text now is looking like it. Now, I will turn off the visibility again and then I need to get rid of this original one on the ID card. Now, I'm on the layer of the ID card which I duplicated before. It's the one we're going to be using. I can turn off the one below. I don't need it. This is the one I need. Now, I'll come to this tool here called Patch Tool. Then with the patch tool, I can select each of the words. I prefer you selecting it individually so you you have little errors because each of the pixels of the image, they have different color grades. So if you select it at once, there might be little variation and you will not like the result. So I prefer selecting individually. And then after making the selection around it, you drag your selection to the nearest place that looks like the image already. So you don't just go far. You don't select this and take it somewhere here. It might look different. So you take it really close to it and then make selection. So you can see now that that particular place is now empty. When I turn on my new text, this is what we have from the new text I just created. This is what we have. It's not looking good enough, but we'll make it look better very soon. Now guys, what we'll need to do next is we'll repeat that process for the other text we are going to be editing throughout this document. So I'll come to my type tool again and then type in Mexico. It's in capital letters. Same thing, come here, increase the type, text size to, I think it was 14 used. Just change, make a contrasting color, something different so I can see it. And then I place it here and transform as well. Holding control, so to change it to the white icon there. And then I would have my Mexico here. And yeah, this is, this is good, this is looking good. So I turn off the visibility, click on color. The reason why it's showing this symbol for me because my caps lock is activated so i'll turn it off and then i'll have back my eyedropper tool then when i sample the color here i'll click on ok and then here we have our text turn off the visibility again and then i need to clean off the mexico written on the id card using the same patch tool that was used in the previous example and then i'll drag it down Okay, there's no enough room for me. You see, you see this, you see this um, glitch here because there was no enough room. So it was trying, the patch tool is trying to blend the previous background with the new one I'm trying to make. So I would not use this place, I will use here, patch it up. Then we'll have something cleaner, looking better. Then turn on my Mexico. And now we have the country and Mexico there. Not looking good enough we used, but we're going to make this look better in a bit. Now, the first thing we need to do to make this text look better is observe. Now, if you observe the other text, you see that it's looking quite noisy and blurry and also pixelated. So these things I just mentioned now are what we will need to be adding to it. And when you come to your filter, you see these options here. We have blur, we have noise, we have pixelate. And these are what we are going to be using to make this text look more realistic. And before we get to that, we need to convert this text to smart objects. And the reason why we need to convert it to smart objects is because we don't want the filters we will be applying to become permanent to it. We don't want it to be flat so we can no longer edit the text because the essence of doing this is so we can always change the text that was written at any point at any time. 
So right now, I'm going to come to filters and say convert for smart filters. And now you see this icon on the text changes. See, look at the other text here. It's having the T icon here showing that it's a text layer. But this one now is showing that it's a smart layer. For this other text now, I want to convert it to a smart object using a different method. Instead of coming to filter here and clicking on convert for smart filters, just right click on the text and you see convert to smart object. Then we have the same effect here. So either way works. Now, with that done, we will start to apply our filters. Now, for this country of bed, first thing we need to do now is come to filters and add noise. And for this particular example, I won't be going too extravagant. Uniform would work. I'm trying to match this with the one already appearing in the document. So. I'll turn off monochromatic because if you observe this one, it looks like it's having some, you know, color noise added to it. If I should turn on monochromatic, see it becomes just black and white. No, I don't want that. I need some color texture as well. Now we're reducing this to about five percent. I think that works for better for me. Now clicking on OK, you see now that it's having some layers here. You see smart filter layers. The first one I have here is add noise, which is the noise I just turned on. If I should turn this off now, look at the text, look at the changes to it. You can see that I can always turn it on and turn it off at any time. Now, what I want to do now is to pixelate it. If I come to filters and go to pixelate and then using mosaic, you see what it does to it. It just turns everything to look like a mosaic art. I don't want this. All I just want to be mosaicized is the edges of this text. So what I will do is holding control and clicking on the layer it will make a selection of the layer you see selection has been made now I'll come to any of the selection tool either lasso tool or marquee tool then i'll right click and click on select inverse so it selects the edges of this text now when i go to filter and pixelate i have mosaic now you see that it's only affecting the edges although this is too much this effect is too much but it doesn't let me reduce this other than two squares but it's fine. There's a way I can reduce the effect. Now, when I click on OK and I deselect using Ctrl D to deselect, going back to my selection tool. When I come to the mosaic um, layer here, you see this icon here. Just double click on it and then you have a blending option for that your mosaic effect. Now, I want to reduce this mosaic effect to 15% opacity. So it's not so visible, but it's there. Now, you see, when I reduce it, it's looking way better way better than before and then i click on ok so now this text has started to look like the already existing text the next um, filter i'm going to be adding is the blur filter and we're going to be using gaussian blur now for this gaussian blur i find that if we take it down to the list which is 0.1% and i start increasing 0.2% percent also visible 0.3% is visible but then it's becoming too much I find that using 0.3 percent is sorry 0.3 pixels is better, but then you would have to reduce it here using the blending options. Going to Gaussian Blur, double clicking on this icon, and then you have the opacity. I'm going to do more than I did just now. I'll change the opacity to 30 percent. About 30 percent works fine. Basically, just use your eye wherever you reduce the bar to, and it works. Use it there, and then I'll change the mode to multiply blend mode to multiply and then when i click on ok now you see that the text is looking way better than before when i turn off the smart filters and turn it on you see it's looking better and more realistic and now for the second text i won't be going over the whole process for the second text which is mexico here because i already went through that stress of achieving all the filters for the first text the second text itself is already a smart object I can just copy those features and apply the same effects on it. Now, how do I do that? While I'm still selected, selecting the second text, which is Mexico, I will hover on to the first text and then come to this icon here. You see this icon here? Just hold alternate on your keyboard and then drag this icon onto the Mexico layer. And then you've just copied the whole effect, the whole smart features on that one and applied it on the Mexico. And now when I click on this arrow here i can turn it on and off and then you see the effects on the object here already so and that is how you apply the smart features on the object 
now if you look at it you can see that the two text layers are not looking the same it seems like mexico is looking way darker than the country of it and that is because when i was selecting the color here i sampled the dark color from the background but that's fine what you can do which is even better is to reduce the opacity of that layer so that it will look like it's blending into the background so i can okay scratch that not the opacity the fill i'll reduce the fill to about 90 percent and then you can see okay it's looking very faded let's leave it at 95 and this is way better than before now with that done we have successfully created a new text layer now we can edit the text of our choice which i can just click on this country of bed when you double click on this smart layer you it will take you to a new document which is the document for that layer so when you double click on this you'll be able to edit the text now i can just put in something like and then click on ok then if you come back to our original document you see the changes are not being applied because you've not saved what you have to do is to save you can use shortcut ctrl s to save or you come here to file and save once it's saved when you come to the original document you see that it has been edited we have place of death here now same thing for the mexico double click on it then you have mexico i can change this mexico to now there's a problem the text we've edited it to is longer than the original one which is very fine what you have to do is come to the crop tool this is your crop tool here and then increase the borders to the point where you have the text as well you do it for the top two and any other place that is bleeding out then click on ok now you save ctrl s and it's saved when i come to the original document we have it here virginia edited now you see that because i i played with the canvas it has distorted the positioning it's not like this virginia is out of this line so we can click on this and then shift it using our direction key or move it down here holding shift so it will retain it on that straight line and move it and now it's looking perfectly aligned if you still don't like the way it's looking it looks like it's warped you know looking a little distorted you can always transform it holding ctrl t and then you can hold your control and move it a bit so it looks straighter and this is looking better it looks like this v here is cut because of this our crop to here at this point coming back to this um document increase use your crop to to increase it up to the point that is visible enough and save when you come back the v is showing fully now that is how you edit it and you can now save your document and export it to the particular file you want it to be as you can export it as jpeg or you export it as pdf i would have loved to continue editing all that to show you but for the sake of time we'll have to stop here for today note that photo manipulation is somewhat an illegal act so it must be done with care and most only when you have to see yourself a lot and from a lot oh wow now if after watching this video you are finding it difficult to follow through the process drop a comment down below explaining your challenge so i can get you past that situation and also it would help others who face similar challenges to get past theirs as well now if you feel like you can do it yourself owing to the fact that you will be very busy or you just need my expert touch to your document you can leave a comment below saying you need me I need you. Oh, scratch that don't say you need me just say you need my services and i will leave my contact below so we could transact if this video was helpful to you which of course i know it was please hit the like button and share to the fellow combat if you haven't subscribed to the channel please hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss out on amazing videos like this and as always it was nice having you thanks for watching and i'll see you in another video